Congregation, will you please rise? Keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Oh, my a closer walk with me. Grind, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be just a closer walk with me. Grind it, Jesus, is my plea. You may be seated. A lot of us have known Ross for a long time. You maybe went to school with him. Maybe he shooed some of your horses. Maybe you knew him from when he was a dairy farmer. Maybe you're the recipient of some of his handiwork, his woodworking. But we've all known Ross, some of us for a long time back to the high school days. Some of you probably knew him from selling horse trailers or some of the other things that he was involved in. We've known this good man, long or short, however long it's been. We also knew that, especially lately, physical challenges have been hard on him and challenged his body. Even in our church here, we've had Ross on our prayer list because we knew of the physical challenges. And so you and we have prayed for him for some time. But we've gathered today because Ross has passed and We want to remember him and we want to pay tribute to him and give God thanks for him and for his life. So thank you for coming. We're going to sing some hymns together. When we get ready for that, we'll instruct you to grab a song book in the chair in front of you underneath. We're going to hear from some of his family. 
We're going to read and ponder some scripture. And we're going to do it all to pay tribute to Ross. So before we go any further, let's pray. Father, thank you again for this journey and this gift we call life. Ross loved life. He loved the outdoors. He said as much. He was always closest to you in the outdoors. He loved your creation. He loved your family. He loved you. And so, Father, we gather together today to say thank you, Lord, for Ross and his love for his family, his love for life, his love for you, his love for all the things that he was involved in. And so, Father, we would just ask that you would guide us as we remember Ross today. Again, I would pray comfort, Lori, and the rest of Ross's family, children and their families and siblings and their families. And just ask, Father, that you would comfort them like only you can. And as we pay tribute to him today, O Lord, may you be glorified and may you draw each of us closer and closer to you. I pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you would reach under the chair in front of you and grab a hymnal, they look like this. We're going to sing Sweet Hour of Prayer. It's only two verses. It's on page 433. And so we're going to sing those two verses together. Then we're going to turn it over to Ernie for an obituary reading and Brother Dave for some eulogy, and then we'll sing again. But we're going to sing Sweet Hour of Prayer. Let's sing it together. 433. Ross was born to Rodney and Charlene Cruz Miller on July 18, 1952, in Staples, Minnesota. He grew up, grew up in rural Staples and graduated from Staples High School in 1970. He then attended Anoka Technical College and graduated with a degree in ferrying education. Ross married Rhea Weber in the spring of 1971 
and they welcomed two beautiful children to the world. Ross and Rhea enjoyed showing and breeding Arabian horses on their farm, Ur-Mar Arabians, west of Staples. Ross also worked on the railroad through these years. On June 11th, 1982, he married his soulmate, Lori Nelson. They blended their families and had one child together. The house was busy all day long with five children south of Bluegrass, Minnesota, on the farm Legacy Jersey. While tending on the farm, he also applied his degree and continued ferrying for over 23 years. After farming, Ross worked a variety of jobs, ranging from estimating at lumber yards, DJing at the local radio station, of course, playing his beloved 50s country music, selling horse trailers at Sunbee Trailers. He ended his career working part-time at a local hardware store in North Branch, where he resides at the time of his passing. Ross was known as a craftsman of all trades and greatly enjoyed the time in his workshop, selling pieces through his business, Partridge River Furniture. While in his shop, also, he put his talents to work blacksmithing. If he wasn't in his shop, you could find him deep in a good book. Ross was an avid reader and found much joy in his ever-growing home library. Loved by many, Ross deeply cherished the relationships that were created through his ventures. He was in he was an extremely kind and generous person who was always willing to lend a helping hand and share his knowledge on a subject. He would tell anyone who listened how proud he was of his five children and each and every one of his grandchildren and their grandchildren. He was dedicated and a love he was a dedicated and loving husband father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, and cousin. All who knew him well were blessed by his humor and teasing nature. Ross was preceded in death by his parents, Rodney and Charlene Miller. He is survived by his wife, Lori, Sons, Jason Miller of Georgetown, Kentucky. Zach, Sarah Weber of Coon Rapids. Ernest, Ashley Weber of Circle Pines. Daughters, Darcy Miller of Champlin, Minnesota. And Amy, Michael Waldvogel of Little Falls, Minnesota. Gan grandchildren, Elizabeth, Jackie Cluxton, Benjamin Miller, Ava Weber, Garrett Waldvogel, Adriana Hernandez, Tyler Weber, Bailey Waldvogel, Betsy Weber, Aaron Hernandez, Jocelyn Waldvogel, Gabriela Hernandez, and two, soon to be three, great-grandchildren, Lewis Cluxton and Lincoln Cluxton. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. I'm Ross's older brother, David. There are six of us. Next in line is Gary, somewhere here. Then Beth, who lives in Arizona and isn't here. Ross followed. 
And last, but certainly not least, are the twins. Scott, who's in the audience, Janelle in Florida. Neither of the girls were able to make it, weather, physical problems, but they're here in spirit. As we start talking about Ross, I'd like to thank Lori, the love of his life, for coming into his and our lives. Lori, your quiet determination, your work ethic, your tact, your faithfulness, your selflessness, your smarts, and certainly not least, your love. Those features change the life of everyone who knows you. Thank you for taking such good care of our brother these many years. We love you and appreciate you more than words can express. Ross Jacob Miller was born July 18th, 1952, which means he was conceived on a cold winter night in November of 1951. <laughs> now we know at the instant of conception, when the swimmer meets the egg, there's an explosion. No one has witnessed it, no one ever will. We get our gender, we get all of the millions, literally, of details that make us all different. I did say awesome God, didn't I? I'd like to talk about what Paul says are talents and gifts. In Romans, he says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Later, he gives an important commandment related to those talents. Use them. You were given them, use them. If you've had a chance to watch the video that's been playing, you've heard the obituary, you have some idea of Ross's many talents and gifts and interests and how well he used them. If you knew Ross at all, you know of his love of books. He was a voracious reader. Jason? That means he didn't just read them, he devoured them. He enjoyed a variety of authors. I'm sure he has every book written by Louis L'Amour and John Sanford. Different authors, he loved them both and many more. Some of them are rare and valuable. I learned that if you wanted to just listen, you didn't want to talk, all you had to do was ask him about his authors. There are examples of his woodworking skills, this little table, the little rocking horse, back in the entry there are a couple more. If you're fortunate enough to have one of those, cherish it. Uh, he was prepared for many hours of enjoyment. There are copious, uh, Ernie, that means lots, <laughs> piles of wood in various stages of completion in the shop. He loved animals. There's a certain cat named Cat 
who is, I'm sure, going through withdrawal because he's lost his best buddy. I don't know who was the boss. If you listen to Ross, it could have been Cat because he pretty much dictated when he went and where he went. Ross and Lori farmed for many years. Ernie told you it was called Legacy Jerseys. Countless hours of love and labor and heartache went into those animals and that farm. There were always the horses. You know he was a farrier, a breeder, a general all-around horse guy. When he and Lori had moved to North Branch and he was no longer on the land, he farmed vicariously. Darcy, that means experienced it indirectly through Lori's amazing gardening skills. Most of all, though, he loved his family. Lori, the love of his life, Jason, Darcy, Zach, Ernie, Amy, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and we all know that there was plenty left over for the rest of us. That love was shown in countless ways not the least of which was displayed in the interminable, now Zach, that means countless, miles he and Lori racked up visiting barns in Iowa, roads in Wisconsin, trips to Kentucky, a special trip he and Zach took to retrieve a special car. And who hasn't heard about Ross and Lori's eminent, Amy, that means famous, trips to the ice cream store? You, his family, have returned that love in the way you've loved and cared for him through thick and thin and we thank you for him. When Darcy shared her dad's obituary on Facebook, she included a quote. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And we all know what she meant. It's profound advice. I'm going to take the liberty of going one step further. When Ross took his final breath, he stepped into eternity. Ever since I heard of his passing, my spirit has assured me that he is with Jesus. I don't question my spirit. That spirit has also been telling me to say this to you. Right now, Ross has an insight that none of us have. If he were here and he could say one thing to us, he would say, get right with Jesus. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Brothers and sisters, friends and loved ones, we are four short days from celebrating Good Friday the day Jesus spilled his blood on the cross to wash away our sins. He is the 
only way through that narrow gate. It's your, t- it's your choice, heaven or hell, for eternity. He's waiting for you. Awesome God, majestic, all-wise Father, eternal creator, Jesus, precious Savior, innocent Lamb, Son of God, Holy Spirit, sanctifier, arbiter, counselor, Comforter, friend, dear Lord God Almighty, we pray that our Ross is resting in your arms. We also pray that his reunions with those loved ones that have gone before are joyous beyond description. Holy Spirit, I pray for your presence with Lori. Be with her as she goes forward without her best friend, her love. Dear Spirit, I happen to know that she has a list of things she wanted to share with Ross. If she found a quiet spot once things settled down a little, and read that list to you? Would you please see that Ross hears it? Please be with the family as they go forward. Comfort them, reassure them, love them. Finally, dear Jesus, precious Savior, I'm afraid there are some hard hearts listening to me right now. If it's your will, Lord, please soften those hearts. Lead them to you and to our Father for eternity. I pray these words in your holy name, Jesus. Amen and amen. If you would take your songbooks again, friends, we're going to sing on page uh, 425 in the garden, 425. There's only three verses there, so we will sing those together before Amy shares with us also. 425, let's sing in the garden together.
I'm going to ask you all to kind of bear with me as I get through this. Today is a day that I have no words, yet I have a thousand words. Memories that used to be a passing thought now hold the weight of a hundred anvils. Our father was one in a million. He was able to teach us kids more than he ever knew he taught us and more than we knew he was teaching us. Our blended family worked in a way that is indescribable. The love him and my mom had for each other, it could be seen from the highest of mountaintops. They were truly each other's soulmates. They complemented every part of each other and the talent between the two of them it was almost sickening. I have adored the small ways they show each other love my entire life. Everything from the teamwork they possessed in everyday life to the grocery lists my dad would make her. Now you can try to guess what these were. The grocery list would consist of cackleberries, hot whip, eastern pants, fall, spring, winter, summer salt, greased fingers, and moo juice. His silly notes that he left for her around the house, and the small little animal figurines that would just randomly show up. Growing up on a dairy farm was not easy. The work was hard, and we all know the money was little, and but we made it work as a family. And looking back, there are way more good memories than anything that came from our time on the farm. Dad did really everything he could to make life fun, to show us the true joy found on the land and in the animals. All of us kids knew we were not to touch the bulk tank early in the morning until Daddy was able to skim that morning heavy cream off the top so he could use it for his cornflakes or those giant shredded wheat bales that he would eat. <laughs> we also knew that springtime planting and falltime harvesting meant not seeing much of him, but those were the times that brought us the car trips up to Schrader's land to the back 80 to bring him his lunch and seeing him come home with a wildflower bouquet for our mom. It also meant a hot summer evening swim at Nine Mile River. <laughs> These are the memories that he may never have meant for us to learn from, but they may be a couple that had the biggest impact on us. The little things were what built us. Whether it was him leaning against the doorframe of the barn and watching my brothers throw fists while he just kept a smirk knowing they needed that moment to work through whatever it is they needed to work through. <laughs> Or if it was standing at the edge of a field shaking his head, watching one of us spread manure with the wind and watching their back become covered with the undesired waste. The silent actions like the energy that went into three times a day milking, crop farming and fixing machinery and fences, yet still making it to the parent-teacher conferences, the evening football games, cross-country races and weekend wrestling tournaments. I know all of us kids carry with us memories that are specific to each of us, like trips to Warren and Carolyn's to gather some hay bales, and not answering him when he asked if you're okay up in the haymow after he heard a loud sound. And when you didn't answer him, he came to check on you, of course you were fine, and he simply asked if you knew the story of the boy who cried wolf. Waking up to him making his famous scrambled egg sandwiches and sneaking onto his lap to help him eat those before he left for work in the morning. A side note on my father and his cooking skills is that he was amazing at two dishes. Scrambled egg sandwiches and goulash. And I can tell you that my mom ate a lot of scrambled egg sandwiches when she had her broken ankle. <laughs> he had a way of making us feel welcome and comforted like like those morning egg sandwiches that he may have made for himself, but they were eaten by the little one on his lap. Or never saying no to the, Daddy, can I have a drink every time his Mountain Dew can was opened. This was carried on to his grandchildren. They always knew Grandpa had an open lap or an open arm to cuddle into and rest. And they could count on him being at any sports event, birthday party, or other such event he was invited to. 
You knew you were in his good graces when he was teasing you. For instance, going to pour yourself a bowl of frosted flakes and finding a note written specifically to you that you were not to touch his frosted flakes and the box would be duct taped shut. <laughs> or dealing with the constant comments of your ripped up jeans and your short shorts. And don't worry, honey, that wasn't just for his granddaughter. He let his daughter know all about that as well. <laughs> and there will never be a puzzle that has all the pieces there will always be that missing darn piece. As stated in his obituary earlier, he jumped at the chance to brag about all of his kids, his grandkids, his great-grandchildren, and all the people that we brought into his life. A dear friend told me in the last couple of days that every time she ran into him, that what she thought would be a five minute conversation turned into something much longer. And by the time they parted ways, she knew everything that had happened in my life since the last time she had seen him. Aside from the pride he had in his family, he was an extremely talented man. He filled all our homes with beautiful pieces that he lovingly put together in his wood shop. And the way he could envision something in his head and turn it into something breathtaking was truly amazing. I know we will all cherish, cherish these items and our children will as well. He couldn't wait to teach our kids a little of what he knew. His shop will be a place of peace for all of us for quite a while. And the smell of the sawdust will forever linger in our dreams. I could go on all day with the memories we have of him and the joy he brought to all of us. Car rides cross country, state fair trips, broken snow cone machines, driving lessons, and so many more. The humble in him would never allow him to know how much he meant to so many different people in his life. I ask you all to keep him alive with your memories. Never forget what he brought to your life and how he impacted you one way or another. I know he's watching over all of us. I love you, Daddy, and I'll forever be your root bear. Cut the tall jeans, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to read the poem, um, The Old Woodworker. And again, apologies because they asked a pregnant lady to do it. <laughs> <clears throat> Across a bench covered with shavings and tools, through passionate eyes his gaze is cast. With thoughts of children and their toys of wood, his mind meanders through many times past. When things that stopped working weren't cast to one side or through failing just given a shove, but repaired and recycled and even redesigned and with a new lease of life were reloved. Now, though they're all gone, the boys with their toys and little girls playing with dolls, so intense. There are others here now to fill in the void and delight in the wonders that Grandpa invents. For he'll take up some pine or whatever's at hand and look long the grain to see if it's straight. From there will emerge something truly unique, but to gaze on its beauty will patiently wait. As the morning sun shines through glistening dew and reflects on his face while he dreams far away, he warms to the thought of new projects to make, and so he begins another new day. Thank you. Thank you to all of you that have painted the picture for us. Because you have painted such a beautiful picture in your tributes and in your memories, I just want to share a little scripture to pull this together for us. As I said earlier, 
Ross grew up in this area. I knew him from high school. I knew him after high school. He shooed my brother's horse's feet. A lot of us have known him a long, long time. So thankful for those memories. But let me just give a little scripture today to bring this all together for us. I want to read a little bit from 2 Corinthians, and I'll tell you why I've chosen 2 Corinthians 4 and 2 Corinthians 5. Then, then I want to read a little bit from John's Gospel. 2 Corinthians 4, the Apostle Paul writes this. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Okay, we know that. We, we know that uh, this, this body, it ain't going to last forever. Paul did too. But he said, we don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And then he says this, and he's not making light of anybody's affliction, but he says this, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul is speaking to believers, followers of Jesus, and he's reminding us there is more. As you have alluded to, Dave, there is more. He's not minimizing anyone's affliction, but reminding us the temporary bodies that which we live are but a moment in the glimpse of eternity. Then he says this, For we know that this earthly house, that's the body, he's talking about our body. We know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. That's good news. A house, Paul says, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. For in this body we groan, we have pain, and we earnestly desire to be clothed with our habitation, which is in heaven. And Paul says this, So we are always confident, knowing that while we are still at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We all knew Ross was weary in his physical body. He was tired. We knew that. And Paul reminds us here in this letter to the Corinthians, our bodies grow that way. We grow weary. We grow tired. But as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ... We actually get to that point that Paul describes here when he says these, these words, we are confident, yes, even well pleased to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We having put our faith and trust in Christ, we get to that point knowing there's a better day. Yes, Ross's heart, spiritual and emotional, long to be with Lori, his children, and the rest of you. But his physical body was like Paul describes here, well pleased rather to be present with the Lord because of the weariness and the tiredness of his physical body.
There's hope in these words of Paul when we know Jesus. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord when we know Jesus. And so let me say this from the Apostle John, the Gospel of John also. I think you're very well aware of these verses, but let, us re- let me remind you of the hope of the promises that are ours in and through Jesus. Jesus said this to his disciples on the very night of his betrayal. The night before, he would be crucified. The night of, when he would be betrayed by one of his own and denied by another one of his own, he knew their hearts were anxious like yours are today because of the loss of Ross. He knew their hearts were troubled. He knew they were anxious. So he lays out these words of comfort and hope and promise to them and to all who will surrender to Christ. He said this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he begins with the promises that is hope for us. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he reminds them and he reminds us, I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go there and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And where I go, Jesus said, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And this is where Jesus reminds us. Jesus said to Thomas and the rest of the group that night, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so he reminds us, as Dave has on this Three or four days, four days before Good Friday, six days before we celebrate Easter, Jesus reminds us as he reminded them that night that he is the way to the Father. It is only through surrendered faith in Christ that we will be with the Father. Ross loved the Lord. He knew Jesus as Lord. And when we know Christ as Lord, Jesus said, there's a home prepared for you. It's just waiting for your arrival. That is the hope that we have. Yes, our hearts grieve for Ross. Yes, there is this vacancy in Lori and their children and and his siblings. There's There's this burden of the loss of Ross. But there is hope in Jesus. And the other side of that coin is, if we don't know Christ as Lord, then we don't have the hope that he's talking about. We will close our eyes in death someday too. And our hope lies in Christ. This is the hope that we have in Jesus. This is the peace that we have in Jesus. This is the assurance that we have in Christ It's all wrapped up in Jesus. And so I want to ask you, friends, to ponder as I close. Do you know Christ? Do you know Jesus Christ as Lord? He's the only way to the Father, he said. He's the only way to heaven, he said. Do you know Christ as Lord? Have you trusted him by faith? Before we sing this last song that's on page four, I want to say two things. 
On behalf of Lori and the rest of the family, a hearty thank you to the University of Minnesota, who in their professionalism provided another physical heart to Ross. It was a gift. And the family wants to say and express once again to the University of Minnesota for their compassion and their expertise and their advocacy, thank you for that gift. And as you have heard already, and if you know Ross, you know ice cream was, well, just like myself, it was high on the list of eats. Ross liked ice cream. And during this time that he was hospitalized, Lori would do whatever it took to keep Dilly Bars frozen in the 45 miles from their home to the hospital to see that he had his Dilly Bar that night. And so, because Dilly Bars were such a treat and a favorite to Ross, once you have had your lunch, and lunch is prepared for us, it's behind you in the fellowship hall, there will also be a Dilly Bar for you in memory of Ross. Let's sing How Great Thou Art. We're just going to sing the first verse and the last how Great Thou Art is on page four of your hymnals. And we're just going to sing two verses, the first and the last. Then I will close in prayer and give us our last instruction. Page four, first verse and last. Before I close us in prayer and invite our funeral directors forward, I want to say to you, please join Lori, the children, the rest of the family, and the fellowship hall that is directly behind us. The lunch has been prepared. It's there for you. Please join them and fellowship with them. And remember, Ross, as we continue to uh, fellowship around the meal. 
Once I have prayed, we will invite our funeral directors forward and they and I will escort the family out. You follow right behind them. Lunch has been prepared for you. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you again for the hope of heaven through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Thank you again that Ross's hope was in Jesus. May ours be squarely the same in Jesus Christ, not in our good works, not in our church attendance, not in anything else but Jesus, just like Ross. Thank you, Father, again for walking with him in the journey. We would have longed, Father, for a little longer time on this side, but we trust you, we love you, we need you, Lord Jesus. And I would ask also and pray, Father God, by your spirit and by your comforting goodness, comfort Lori, their children, grandchildren, children-in-law, siblings, and all the rest. Comfort them, Father, in the journey ahead. Help them to know that they are loved. Help them to know, as Dave has said, and Scripture remind us, that when our hope is in Christ we will be okay, safe in the arms of Jesus. Help them to take comfort in that and strength from you, O oh God. Thank you for the food that has been prepared. Bless it to our bodies and to a time together of, of uh, just remembering and fellowship. Thank you again for Ross. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls me away. Oh, yes. Where the morning's so bright and the Lamb is the light. And the night, night is as fair as the day. Oh, yes, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. In the valley for me, for me, well, the bear will be gentle and the wolf will be tame and the lion shall lay down by the lamb. And the beast of the wild shall be led by a child, and I'll be changed, changed from this creature, Lord, that I am.